You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at this ink. This is another ink in the uh, Kala Nostalgia set of inks. Uh, Kala Ink Abstraction Nostalgia Mongolian Sandstorm. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that a lot of these are actually pretty similar. Well, Mon Mongolian Sandstorm is definitely one that is not. This is uh, a much different ink. Here's what it looks like in the bottle. These are 30 mil bottles, and I got them from Jet Pens for $10.75 a bottle. Uh, the front of this does not tell you what color is in here. This is actually, well, it's much more like this, which is kind of a purple. And there you can see that. If you look at the edge of the bottle, it looks like it's going to be a very purple ink. That is actually not my experience with this particular ink. It's not super duper purple. Here it is. It's kind of a... It's, kind of, it's a really interesting color, actually. Uh, it's got that sort of matte texture that you get from a, um, from a pigmented ink, because, of course, this is pigmented. Don't be afraid of that. I haven't had any problems with this uh, ink stopping up or anything. Uh, and I've actually been using it in this extra fine nib since, um, I don't know, about 10 days or so by the time I'm filming this. And I've been using it in this pen right here, which is a Kasama Tala. Uh, which has an extra fine nib on it. This is a Yovo nib, uh, so I'm real familiar with those. And uh, I, man, I was kind of dubious about using this extra fine nib because I'm not an extra fine guy. I'm a uh, medium and bigger guy. But this nib is really nicely tuned, uh, I assume by uh, Mark Backus, nib grinder, because uh, he sells these guys. Uh, this one's on loan. I got to give it back. It's very sad. Uh, but uh, in this uh, in this pen, oh, well, you know what? I didn't write the uh, performance thing let's see how does this do I'm gonna see a little writing sample here on camera because why not um very mild feathering on the 20 pound how about bleed what we got here i'm gonna say a couple of spots All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is uh, the 20 pound copy paper from Staples, 30% recycled, pretty much the junkiest stuff you'll have in your office, assuming you have an office to go to right now. Uh, and then on the back, there's a few little spots. I mean, you get some show through because this stuff is very thin. Uh, and like, you can actually see like <laughs> how patchy it kind of is. When you, when you look at it in the light like that. So this is not good paper. And even on here, uh, I think it performs pretty well. I mean, this is an extra fine nib, but uh, I mean, it got very similar performance from the fine nib, which is definitely bigger than this one. And I think, uh, I mean, I've used this with like double broads and stuff, just not this particular uh, ink in this range. But pigmented inks are usually very good on questionable paper. So uh, this is an extra fine, no stoppage, no hesitations, no hard starts. The flow has always been perfect in this thing, uh, which is pretty great. I was surprised about that from an extra fine nib because I'm always a little dubious about those. But you'll also notice that it doesn't really... Let's get even closer here if we can. It doesn't really come off as violet much. I mean, you get a little bit of a violet hue to it, but it's really kind of a gray, it seems. Or maybe a some sort of blue. It's like a it's a very cool color, but it's like a, I don't know, a grayish, a purpley gray, kind of, maybe? Um, now, I'm not sure exactly why it's called Mongolian Sandstorm. I don't think they have purple sand in Mongolia, but who knows? Maybe if you know why it's called that, please let me know in the comments because I don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, I bought this ink, and I actually really like it. So let's try a water test on this one. If you'll remember from the last video, man, uh, pigmented inks are generally very good underwater. And uh, this one, the last one was no exception, so I would be surprised if this one was. Put plenty of, plenty of water on there. Let's give it a little bit of a shimmy. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not moving at all. So that's 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 as expected, really. Now let's go ahead and blot this up real quick. Blot, blot, blot. And uh, yeah, nothing, nothing on the on the paper towel. No movement that I can discern on the page. Uh, so yep, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one probably waterproof. Uh, no problems at all with water on this one. So yeah, feel free to use this in all your uh, all your 
I don't know, places where you might have an aquatic environment or whatever, it uh, does really well. It also dries fairly quickly, and it does change color a little bit as it dries, not as dramatically uh, as the other one, I don't think, but a little bit. And I'll put a little video up here of it changing colors while I'm getting other stuff ready. All right, so let's take a look at this on some different papers and look at it next to uh, some other inks uh, uh, that are a little bit similar anyway. So here it is. Right here, Kala, uh, Kasama Tala Extra Fine with this Kala Mongolian Sandstorm. And uh, it looks actually pretty nice here, I think. It's uh, kind of a bluish, purpley gray color. Uh, anyway, it's pretty unique. I didn't have a whole lot of stuff that was pretty unique. It was, I think it's, I think it's unique. Uh, and then let's look at it here in an ink journal. This was, of course, the uh, uh, currently inked wheat straw paper. This is the ink journal with Tomoe River. Uh, there it is, right here. On Tomoe River, it definitely looks more purple. So you can definitely get more of that purple color depending on your paper and stuff too, but uh, it looks more blue in other papers and such. So you get a more purple tone here, but I still like it enough. I think that's pretty cool. All right, uh, let's take a look at it next to a bunch of other inks. Oh, and hey, I have chromatography for this one. Boom, right there. You get a little bit of separation, definitely more than you did with uh, Blue Lagoon Vapor, but still a little bit of separation here uh, this is of course where it started out. You get a little bit of, a little bit of color separation, some darker streaks in there, some little bits of like maybe pink or something up at the top, but this line down here at the bottom is steady and, uh, yeah, nothing came up on here. So pretty impressive stuff. All right, here it is on the color, uh, color Dex card and you'll notice there's all kinds of like crazy bloops here. I don't know why, but when I was using my glass nib, uh, glass nib dip pen to uh, write those, for some reason, it was just like sliding right off of the, the nib. And so I dip it in there and go foof and just like all get on the paper. So maybe not one for your, uh, for your dip nibs and glass nibs and stuff. Maybe it's got low surface tension or something like that. Um, here's one, let's see. This one I actually thought was closer last night when I was doing this <laughs> in the dark maybe. Uh, but this is uh, Sailor Shikiori, Yozakura, I want to say, and you've got some of the same tones like in the middle of this bit and over here, but not really. That's not that's not all that close. Uh, you've also got uh, here, let's see, I went for Robert Oster Viola because I think it's got some of the same stuff out here in the shading areas as it does in here, but the main tone of Robert Oster Viola is definitely more purple than Mongolian Sandstorm. This is a real cool ink though. I did a review on this not too long ago. Definitely go check this out. Um, then we have, uh, let's see which one's closer. Let's do this one. This is Sailor Bung Box uh, Sakona Machi, which I haven't actually used yet. I know I've got a sample of it because I made this, but I haven't actually used this ink yet, I don't think. Uh, but it's got some of the same colors. It definitely shades off a little bit lighter, I think, than this one does. This one never gets that pale. So I'm a little worried about where this one will go if using you know, different nibs, but the, the heart of it is kind of the same. And then Robert Oster Summer Storm, if you want a non-pigment, uh, more purple, sort of bluish, grayish color, this one's got a more of a gray cast, I think, than Mongolian Sandstorm does. So it just shows you some, like, some differences in uh, various colors that are in that spectrum. There's that up in there, and this little guy, Don Hill. So yeah, Mongolian Sandstorm. I think it's pretty, I think it's unique. Uh, I didn't have anything that was even close to it, really. At least not super close. This is probably as close as it gets, and that's that, uh, that's that Sakura. Well, and now when I put it next to it again, not that close. I don't know, man, I'll have to tell you, this is a neat color, and I think you ought to try it out. In fact, I think uh, definitely give these Kala Nostalgia inks a try. Uh, Jet Pins is still shipping fairly sporadically right now during uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So I hope y'all are staying safe. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stay home. Uh, but uh, also, like, maybe try out some of these cool links while you're staying at home inside, washing your hands and not touching your face. All right, that's it. I'll see you later. Peace out.